Hola amigos, it's June 3rd, 2024. I finally got a break after working three 15, 16 hour shifts. So Friday into Saturday, Saturday into Sunday, and Sunday into Monday morning. I've only averaged 89 hours working from Sunday to Sunday. Literally no days off. No, Z I mean zero days off. Some days I work 8.5 hours, which is almost like nine hours. So the way people get in 100 hours a week, like an outlier, like Elon Musk, is that they work 16 hours a day for five days, five or six days. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. Uh, but that's what you need to do to have the material things you want in life. And uh, you know what? Now that I'm 39 to 40 years old, I... I probably just don't want it enough, you know? To write my own book, to star in my own movie, to be somebody. It takes a lot of work. And so, I'm just here at the park. <sighs> Trying to mind my own business. <clears throat> Sorry, I attract a lot of attention. Just standing around being a nobody. I don't know why, but uh, maybe it's a little bit of paranoia. Maybe it's a little bit of narcissism. I don't know. Maybe because I'm Asian. I don't know. I don't know what the hell it is. But I attract a lot of attention unintentionally. And it, it's annoying. So I have to constantly move around. Attention is not, is not my thing. I want humility. I want to be a nobody. I intentionally want to be a nobody. So no one has to talk to me. So they don't have to try to grift me. So they don't have, they don't have to try to sell me anything. So they don't have to try to scam me. <clears throat> so I don't have to compete in some kind of weird attention uh, economy. So I don't ha need social validation. You know, I'm an introvert. I don't need that shit. I don't need to buy shiny things. I don't need to constantly interact with people. I don't have to constantly send people spam calls and phishing emails and all this grifting shit and sales to promote sales and <sighs> I'm not that guy I'm just not that guy nor do I want to be that guy fine you can make easily make six figures a year being that guy you know selling people cars and, uh, and stocks and stock tips and inside trading and all this other bullshit I'm not that guy I'm not Chad I never said I was Chad I'm not alpha male. I don't, I don't want to be that guy. If I had two, three kids and a wife in New Jersey, that is at least half, at some point I would have to have spent a half a million dollars uh, or the wife leaves and the kids just go retarded because, you know, they're going to public school. You know, they're not getting tutors, not getting mentors. You know, they're not getting properly, uh, you know, serviced by professionals. Uh, you know, instead they're at home playing video games and watching porn like I did, and it's just like I don't. I, the world's an in an old person like me. I know what that's like. I've collected three <sighs> unemployment three times in my life, and I've exhausted all benefits three times. One time I collected up to one year of unemployment money. Just writing out the government. I said I would do all these things. Oh, I'm gonna learn programming. I'm gonna, you know, do all these great things. But in the end, I just watched porn. I played video games. I was daydreaming, you know. And that's just the kind of person I am. I'm not grounded, you know. My brother is a more grounded person. He lives in Switzerland right now. I have the footage. Uh, shitty footage of me just, you know, being a tourist in Switzerland, Italy. He's a more grounded person. At the same time, you know, 
you gotta be detailed oriented to everything which can be quite annoying so your standard level of standard of living increases uh, their standards increases so you're, you're more bitchy and naggy about everything and uh, your baseline of happiness also uh, the standards increase so you know when you go down a rug a rung you're kind of like this and that and why isn't this clean and why isn't that clean or why isn't that washed it, it just drags on and on it's just like holy shit oh. I'm not that at that level so I, I don't want to give a shit again I'm drinking my soda uh, my Polar Springs seltzer water and again you know people high, more higher level people would not drink from a can even this is a Polar seltzer one of the higher you know upper echelon of, of, of seltzer water in America, uh, people don't drink out of the can because, you know, they want it in glass. In Switzerland, everything, in Italy, everything was served in glass, glass, at the restaurants because they don't have all these funny BPA chemicals in there. Even though the can may say non-BPA, there's still like trace elements of plas microplastics and shit and everything, unless it's made out of glass. You're supposed to, you know, be so high, strong, and uptight about your, your diet. And, when you eat and drink, everything is supposed to be served to you on a silver platter or in a glass bottle. I mean, whoop, voila, de da. I mean, I'm not gonna bend my ass over for that. Uh, every f step of the way, it's, it's not practical for me. <clears throat> in terms of time, I could probably f afford it. I just don't have the patience for it. You kids have to drink out of a glass bottle. That actually happened at the pool. Someone dropped their glass bottle and the next thing you know they had to shut down the damn pool because they were afraid of someone suing them from getting you know glass bottles stuck up their ass or in their eyeball a, a shard not to mention those little kids shard in the pool as in took a shit in the pool <sighs> oh god kids you know you know I watched kids grow up now that I'm 39 you know People like my age, I have kids and they're, they're probably in high school right now. And it's just like, huh, it's just another generation of yo-yos. It's just another generation of unemployable, you know, people. So it's like, what the, you know. Then I watch David Goggins, he's like, you don't need to be from a special family. You don't need to be from some kind of bloodline. You don't need to be high IQ, you don't need to be, you know, all these things. You just need to fucking, you know, grind. You need to just fucking do the work. Just realize you, you there's no one else out there to save your ass. No matter how, how hard they try to grift or scam you or speak like they're Donald Trump, you, you just have, you are your own savior. You can buy all hair. I just bought a million dollars worth of self-help books and uh, meetings with uh, the top gurus in the world. That's great for the top gurus in the world. Am I going to leave their seminar as a five-star alpha male, high-performing male? Probably not. You know, I'll still probably just be this yo-yo guy. You know, I'm not going to grow six feet tall. I'm not going to be making six figures. Actually, I do make six figures. I'm not gonna be making two hundred thousand dollars, and you know, like TikTok girl wants. I'm still just gonna be five nine, so I'm a little bit shy of what TikTok girl wants in a man. You know, I probably spend all my time trying to achieve this six, this uh, two hundred thousand dollar a year uh, figure that I have no time for girls or anything else but to take care of myself, the bare minimum to take care of myself like going out uh, for a walk and getting sunlight and exercise I asked a girl at work um, she's like I just prefer to go to school than to work she was Indian, so she wasn't spoiled, and I could tell that, you know, she was keeping it real. Um, you know, and I just wish, you know, I was back at that stage 
that life wasn't so complicated. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about scammers. I didn't know about grifters. I didn't know about these weird insurance people that exist that just scare the shit out of you to buy their insurances. You know. <sighs> I didn't know any of that shit. I was young. And all I had to do was go to school, you know. You know, five dollar lunches or your mom makes you lunch or whatever, and that's all you had to worry about. In the real world, people can just scam you, they can grift you, they can just drive a car into you, and you can just die. I mean, it's... I mean, it's savage. People can just hold you at gunpoint and take your money, it's just like, what in the actual fuck? That's the real world, and you know, everyone else who is a good boy or a good girl goes to school. There's this one Chinese girl, she was like 31, and she went to, you know, had some fake IDs and everything to go back, go to a school in like Queens or Brooklyn or the Brooklyn or the Bronx or some weird shit, some ghetto shit. And she was from, she was native, Chinese native. And it's just like, why the fuck would anyone go to extreme lengths to institutionalize themselves? I guess th this is it, you know. Like, that's, that's life to them. That's their comfort zone. They're a rat in the system. That's when you know you've been uh, matrixized. You've been taking too much blue pill. You want to take too much blue pill. You want to take the blue pill. You want to go back to the... You know, cookie cutter lifestyle. That's what you want. You don't want to see these grifters. You don't want to see these scammers. You don't want to see these, you know, predators in the world. That's what happens. You know, when you start making money, all the predators and all the scam artists start, start showing up. When you win the lottery, you know, all these weird, weird faces and phone calls and phishing emails start coming out. And this gets worse and worse. You know, it's just like, what, what in the actual fuck? How come these people didn't exist before? That, that's, that's the real world, you know? You know, when Native Americans had land in America, you know, the white man was coming over and killing them. It, it just, for their land. That's, that's all they knew. It's just, you know, they were getting robbed. Uh, that's what happens when you have stuff, when you have money. All the... You have competition. People, someone else wants it. And that's the real world. When you're at school, you know, there are standards, there are rules, there are regulations. You kids can't do that shit. And so some people, they're, they're cogs and the, they want to be cogs in the machine because that's, that's, that's where they feel safe. Mal Maslow's hierarchy of needs, safety. You know? <clears throat> They don't want to go to Cape Town in Africa. They don't want to get mugged. They don't want to get robbed. They don't want to get shot at. But that's the real world. You know, people will kill you over nothing. So I'm just going to take a walk and go back home. Uh, looks like I'm just going to sleep afterwards. Uh, I had nothing, no other time but to sleep, uh, eat, and go outside for some fresh air, and that's it. Um, did I have any time for anything else? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, I just ended up playing video games inside at work so that I can just you know get my mind off of things or you know just catch up or just be daydreaming inside the co being a cog in the matrix you know I don't recommend anyone playing video games at work but uh, I had the luxury to do so and I did enjoy my time at work playing video games and um you know, my thoughts weren't preoccupied about primal need, my primal needs like chasing around girls or sex or doing something stupid with my money and stuff like that.
So as long as I'm at work, I have my safety net, I have my institution, I have my comfort zone. And you know, I, the more you're institutionalized, uh, the weaker you become outside. You know, the more and more you'll try to get back into the, to the, to the machine. <coughs> to the industry. So it's, it's crucial that I go out into nature <coughs> to balance myself out more. And when I'm outside, I, I don't need to be playing video games. I don't need to have all these vices and stuff. I don't need alcohol. Some people are out here too, just chilling in the back. Um, some people own their own land and have farms. And, you know, they don't like dealing with paperwork and bullshit. And so they're just on their farm, growing food, eating organically. And that's the whole day. <clears throat> I can see myself doing that. I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't. I don't bullshit with all this fucking bull, bullshit. You know, some people just walk around. They start bullshitting all day, every day, like politicians, and that's what they do. That's their gift of gab. That is their silver spoon in their mouth. You know, they're just setting the frame for everything. You know, they have to be so controlling and manipulative. Like Floyd Mayweather in boxing, you know, when he fought Manny Pacquiao, the Filipino boxer, Pac-Man, he kept demanding things. I remember he spent like 10 hours demanding things. I will only fight if X, Y, Z will is fulfilled. That's what. That's the kind of prick you need to be to um, control the frame. You need to be anal. You need to be paying that close attention to detail. You know, every second of the way. And it was just so anal. It was just so anal, like a computer. Like, does he deserve the money? I mean, it was just like so autistic with his de level of detail. It was like insane. The Elon Musk of boxing, it was just like, what the fuck? It wasn't just like he wanted, he didn't just want to fight. He just had all the technical details like a prick. And that's how, you know, he got his leg up in the world. It's, you know, it's just like a calculator. But that's, that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. You just gotta to win. No one liked him. No one liked him for it, but that, that's how he got, got the points. You know, it wasn't like a traditional brawl. It was just, you know, it was just like a robot. That's how he won. My God. Just get all the points and, you know, Get out of there. Just, you know, say all the crazy shit. You know, control the frame. And, uh, you know, work on your leverage. And then, you know, say no a thousand times to everything. And you'll be on your way. That's why I don't deal with people. I'm not, probably not strong enough. I'm not strong enough to be setting all these frames and boundaries and borders and... You gotta have to be really strong, thick skin. In any given situation, very thick skin. Otherwise, people are gonna pick on you. They're gonna take advantage of you. You know, you're gonna get. If you don't ask for raises at work or you don't threaten to quit, you know, they're just gonna take advantage of you. They'll just throw you under the bus, and that's it. You know. There's no, you gotta know how to negotiate, you have to know how to sell yourself, you know, all the above. I don't recommend people being like me, the quiet ones, you know, you know, agreeable, high in agreeableness, you know, they don't, they just become Timmy, they just become, you know, another yo-yo, you know, the Starbucks barista, that's the easy life, that is the rat, that is the cog in the machine. People who know how to step up their game and create boundaries and 
all this like anal attentive tiv, and high strung and uptight shit they normally get their way you know maybe I should work on that with myself just being more of an annoying prick like how I've been uploading two three videos a day let's do it every single motherfucking day just so I can raise the uh, YouTube algorithm you know the analytics and you know the trafficking and SEO search engine optimization just be a prick about it like Floyd Mayweather in boxing just annoyingly demand things and be all uptight and high strung about everything and be like entitled and yeah, I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna do it unless you have your laundry of stuff, demands and shit and you're trying to negotiate this and that it's just like everyone's like holy shit man this just accept the prize money and, and if you win and, and then fight. But no, he wanted full control of the of the frame. And this was like crazy. It's crazy. It's like grandma. My God, crazy motherfucker. But that's what you gotta do. You gotta do. You know, if you're just this whatever person saying yes, you're gonna get a yes man, like a Japanese seller man. You're just gonna get thrown under the bus. You're gonna do whatever the company tells you to be doing and you're gonna suffer from burnout. That doesn't bother me. The problem with me is I, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, I get it. You're the company and I have to work and to make money. Which is where someone like me would lose. Only the assholes in the world, only the entrepreneur would, would win. But again, it takes a lot more work. It takes a lot more effort, brain power, critical thinking, you know, creative, creative content, you know, a network of other people and leadership and stuff like that. So it does, you, you have to, uh, auto, you literally have to be a more high value person to be executing on some kind of like entrepreneur model as to being a basic bitch cookie cutter guy, a uh, salar Japanese salary man. You know, you, ha you literally have to be a bad boy, uh, an outlier. You know, it's the crazy ones that change the world, Steve Jobs. You can't just be, you know, a good girl, Amelia Earhart, you know. No one remembers, you know, the good people in the world. They just do what they need to do. They just serve the community and they're good people. And, you know, a, no one really remembers them. It's, it's only like the motherfuckers the badasses people acknowledge the first place people but I don't know it's also a whole complicated animal it's a very complicated animal here on Monday it is a Monday you know Bill Gates's daughter just became a doctor and whatnot and um, that has nothing to do about money uh, she has all the money in the world she's a doctor um, but we don't have that luxury we're just here to make money because of the primitive you know uh, capital accumulation phase but when you're up there on Maslow's hierarchy and have all your primitive needs met uh, day in and day out you want uh, social validation you want respect 
You want self-actualization. You want people to acknowledge you. Bill Gates' daughter. You know, you don't even have a name. You're just Bill Gates' daughter. Good for her. Good for her. And that's kind of weird for me. I don't know what that's like. Um, I don't know what that's like. I read about Hot Ryan Holiday. How, um, you know, rich people don't just, you know, flush their money down the toilet. They give back to society sometimes. And, uh, you know, they owe it to their ancestors and whatnot. And they try to make what's wrong what's right. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, I've never been in that situation. And it's probably fairly difficult. So if you're the rich pe person, everyone's trying to scam you. Everyone's trying to grift you. So, you know, like America has grifted and scammed and killed Native Americans for their money, uh, for their land, and, you know, they're trying to retribute things and, you know. I don't know. It's just on a much larger scale than what I'm used to. And it's not my business. This is too much. It's too much. Too much, yo. So, welcome to my life. Um, I was also reading a book called, um, listening to a book on YouTube. Die with zero, you know. Why do we work to begin with and what the hell do we actually do with all this money? Um, you know, what do you do on your on your deathbed? I've seen people die before. They just fucking die. It's nothing special. I would just be concerned about all that nervous energy and anxiety you get. You know. That's my main concern. Maybe they could give me Valium or put me to sleep with something, Xanax, because, you know, I'd probably worry about that shit. But as you die, you die, you know? And what... Some people, you know, wish, always wish they were back in time, took a time machine back and lived a, a timeline when they were with the girl, you know? Well, I found the girl, and she's a prostitute, okay? She sells her services. You can find one yourself at the local strip club, whorehouse, and or brothel. That's all it is to me, a brothel. That's, that's the fantasy that the sex industries sell. Because there's a demand for it. Even I want it, you know? I'm an average yo-yo, and, you know, that's what they sell, you know? Adult entertainment. Uh, in reality, you know, does this girl exist for that day? It does, but then reality kicks in. She has parents, they're aging, you have to take care of them, you know, adult diapers, you know, all this fucking shit that life comes with. And it's just like, is it worth it? And when I look at the lives of Chad's and Tyrone's, and they start talking about child support, and, you know, I'm just like, holy shit, man. Well, fuck this shit. You know. Some guys, you know, the girl sues, sues them because they have money just for about everything and anything. Bill Cosby, you know, and Epstein, you know, whatever the fuck. It just gets really, really crazy. Johnny Depp and Andy Amber Heard shit. It's just like, oh my God. America is not a kosher, it's not a safe place for having boyfriend and girlfriend relationships. Um, it's really not, and neither is anywhere else in the world. Uh, except designated places like strip clubs, whorehouses, and brothels. Um, because anywhere else people are always super selfish, super greedy, and they'll just take everything because hunters and gatherers. That's just how they're wired. Unless you meet uh, Mother Teresa or something. Which most likely not, and 
Am I just being an asshole and judging? Probably, but you know, nine out of ten times people are super selfish and they'll just take everything. That's how it is. Um, as for my own life, I worked. You know, did I wish I could work more? Uh, I live on a scarcity mindset. Um, I also have yet to buy my own first apartment. So, you know, I have a lot of things going that I need to work and that I need to make money. It's not like I'm just some rich person f floating around wondering what I should be doing with my money. Uh, that's just not my thing. So, um, I too am in the same boat as to the primitive uh, capital accumulation phase of humanity. And maybe these things I think about are just too far off. Or too high up on the, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And that I need to come back down to earth. I need to be more, more grounded. I could just need to be more grounded. Uh, you have to be grounded. I watched Ty Lopez. You know, he spent 50... He claims he spends 50%, you know, out in the farms, the Amish and all that, and 50% in uh, the city so that he can uh, feel more uh, grounded, so that he can uh, connect to the earth and just live as a human being. Um, that's what I'm trying to establish right now. When you're in the world of technology and people and, you know, sales calls and emails and grifters and scam artists, you're kind of like, is this just a bunch of bullshit? And you're like, yes, it is, you know. You, you don't need all that stuff. You don't. You, you need oxygen from the trees and the sunlight, vitamin D and you know, rich soil for food and stuff, and you need to sleep at night. The animals need the same thing too, if you, you know. That's all you really need. And the fact that you don't appreciate it or you always want more is because you don't have humility. You, you lack humility. Well, you, you know, you just have to be more humble. You know, go for a run. Get some exercise, exhaust yourself somehow, and you will find humility. Or just donate all your money and start all over again. Or live in another country. And just try to establish a new life and see how hard that is. Learn new languages. Learning how to connect with other people. You know, trying to find an apartment, doing, getting out of your comfort zone. You will, you will find that, you know, your brain is going to have to start working. Not just for money, but for your own personal safety and survival. Uh, to grow. You'll find much growth and discovery. And soon you will see that starry twinkle in your eyes. Once more, you have dreams. That you have, can be inspired. That you have things to do in life that are enjoyable. So I'm just going to walk in the field here. Um, it's hard to imagine that Switzerland is about 10 times more beautiful than this. Um, but this is just dirty New Jersey. It's nothing really, uh, anything out of my comfort zone. Um, I don't know. Italy reminded me a lot like New Jersey. It was just like half suburban, half city, and you have grass and farms and, you know. But it was really unique because of Venice and Milan and 
they had their own spin on things. And it was just like, wow, this is a life worth living. There's so much interesting things to be doing and seeing and exploring. Here in America, everything is just hitting baseline. I'm just used to everything. It's, it's not comforting to me. It's just, you know, predictable. I feel entitled. I just feel like a cog in the machine. And that's what will happen to you when you live in the same place for too long. You just feel like a cog in the machine. You're also getting older. You're also wondering about what all your peers are doing or whatever. And, you know, you wish you could go out more or return back to a time when you had that opportunity to be with girl. You know. Women don't suffer from the same thing as men do. Girls, I don't know. It's, it's like they're wired to have a mate to attract someone, so it's a lot easier for them. You know, you spread your legs, bend over, cough, and a million dudes show up. Meanwhile, when you're a guy, and one of those, one of those, one of a million dudes, you have to haul ass, you have to work, you have to buy her chocolate, candy, flowers, a house, make $200,000 a year, be six feet tall, you know, get your name legally changed to Chad and or Tyrone, Ch Chad Rone, uh, Ty Chad, Tyed, Tyed. So anyways, uh, that's, 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 that's what's up. And, uh, it's, I'm gonna bike home, take a shower, sleep, and then rinse and repeat. Um, yeah, there's not much else I could be doing uh, with my time. I'm gonna be looking around, you know, the older me, I'm just like, oh, what could I have done? Maybe I could go out with that cute girl. And then run into money problems and run into these things, time problems. Like, I spend all my time making money. Then why the hell did you tell me to make $200,000 a year, girl? It's just like, what the fuck? Am I fucking stupid? And then I'm just going to start blaming everyone. It's the girl's fault. Their standards are too high. You know, it's the guy's fault. He's too dumb. He can't make $200,000 a year. You know, whatever the fuck it is, you know, I, I'm, I'm just incapable. I'm literally just, you know, I can't deal with all this fucking shit, you know, all these standards and, you know, requirements girls need for guys is, is, is fucking crazy. Most guys probably can't deal with it either. Either shut down completely, play video games, watch porn, go to whorehouses. Or they just go become passport bros. Um, no one can deal with these pedestaled, entitled, you know, Karens and, you know, who want all this stuff for, for doing nothing. And it just feels like a scam. No one feels like they're being treated fairly. Uh, no one feels like they've, you know, are competent in this field of satisfying Karen. And, you know... People are just going to be thrown under the bus, being cheated on left and right. And it's like, what What in the actual hell? Um, so, this dynamic will sadly and unfortunately turn into real estate as well. You know, instead of the girl, it's going to be the apartment. You know, life will just be... The scarcity will just be so bad that it it won't be about girl. It will just be about you know survival. You need the apartment. It costs three thousand dollars of rent a month, and you need two or three jobs minimum to survive. Much like Hawaii. So forget about the girl. Forget about having a baby, and this and that. Um, you know your life is fucked simply because you were born. You know you didn't do anything wrong. You were just born. You know to a system that's been hijacked by all these corrupt banks and you know financial institutions and even colleges and you know auto industries and you know anything anything they try to get you to buy something it's too expensive you gotta take out all these loans and you spend most of your life trying to pay these fuckers back 
or whatnot. And that's life. Maybe you'll die like that. That's how my dad died of a stroke. Uh, after doing all this martial arts, the kung fu shit, you know, it's, uh, it's always about the money. You know, it's always about the people arguing and wanting things to be perfect, but, you know, reality is shit. And there's always a person who's a Karen, overly demanding, expects you to do all this stuff. You know, overemphasizes on the, the importance of a tissue, that direction of which your tissue or napkin faces while you eat. And, um, yeah. One day, no one's gonna give a fuck anymore because those were your standards. Those, everyone was trying to live up to your standards, and, you know, one day they just let themselves go, and, you know, the whole sh shit hits the ceiling fan because we, we're all just pretending. You know, to live in your magical kingdom, when in reality, no, no one really gave a fucking shit. Criminals probably operate similarly. Um, you know, there's no real uh, law enforcement 24/7, and they just go do whatever the hell they want to an extreme. Um, I'm not that bad of a person, but it could be hap It could happen. Some people just don't have boundaries. Uh, for or, or borders for their craziness or you know whatever the hell they feel like it so I spent my hour gr being grounded trying to be more grounded with the earth and getting my vitamin D and just breathing fresh air and that's that's how you do you know I don't need to watch TV I don't need to watch Emma Stone. Just go outside and enjoy it. Because I suffered enough at work. To enjoy, you need to suffer. Delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Resilience. Again, Bill Gates' daughter. Delayed gratification. Even super ultra rich people who don't need the money need to practice resiliency and delayed gratification. You know, if you didn't need money, would you be smoking crack cocaine and playing video games, going to the whorehouse all day? Your baseline of happiness would just keep going higher and higher and higher to, to the point that you always need those things in order to just feel normal. Just to feel a buzz or a little kick that's what happens when you become rich you know it's all out of whack because your, your standards are too goddamn high you have no humility and so Bill Gates's daughter needs to be somebody needs to be have some kind of social validation you know she needs to be a doctor she needs to help people she has these genuine needs to help people, not to scam people, not to grift people, but to help people. After all your Maslow's hierarchy needs are filled, you can help people. You can finally help people. You know, your cup is full. You are Jesus. You know, you are qualified to help people. You know, there was this girl at work, she, a nurse, she's like, do you need me? Do you need me? Why does she... No, I clearly had this face like, I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm just working. I didn't need her. I pointed her to the patient. He needs you. Bed room 17 fucking needs you. He has a broken leg and shit. He just got into a car crash. I don't need you. I don't fucking need you. My cup is full. This patient who just got into a fucking car crash, you know, who's worried that he's got glass in his eye, fucking needs you. Not me, but girls respond to guys that don't have needs, you know, that are, are fulfilled. But that's the thing, when you don't care, when you're an asshole, that's when girls find the guy most attractive. But when he's in need, that's when she starts running away. He needs money, he needs to be six feet tall, he needs this and that, you know, that's when they start running away. When you're just being an asshole, that's when they come. When you're an actual asshole, like a pimp, 
You know, that's when they come for you. That's when they get attached to you. And the whole thing doesn't make any sense. And the nice guy's trying hard as hell, but he's, he's not doing it either. And the whole thing's just fucked up, you know? And everyone's just looking at Tyrone, like, how is he getting gr the girls? It's just like, he's just a complete fucking asshole. Well, unfortunately, you know, that's how it works. That's how the world works. That's how fucked up the world works. But then there's Ryan Holiday. You know, he's like the greatest revenge is don't be like those people. In my defense, just be who you are. I gotta survive the month of June. I'm working every day. Um, this is not much different from any other day. Um, you know, will the money pay out? I mean, Yada Bank just collapsed. I could have worked my whole life, put all my money in Yada Bank, played the little lottery game, won about $500,000 at most, and lost all my money. I have it frozen in the bank because the bank fucked up. And that's what happens in, in China a lot. Um, it's not the person's fault. They've been working. They've been contributing to Social Security. Getting the social credits. But the banks and the institutions, you know, if you don't have one or two of banks that are like Chase or Wells Fargo, even Wells Fargo's corrupt, and they've collapsed overnight, you're fucked, you know? Again. Ryan Holiday, he, he talks about this all the time, Zeno, and, 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 you know, all these different characters who lost everything, they had to, uh, the only thing that mattered was, was character, are they strong people, do they have boundaries, do, do they have honor, do they have discipline, you know, do they have work ethic, these are the most important things, the virtues are more important than actual physical money because if you're scamming, you're grifting, if you're just driving your car into people and just try, drunk driving, you know, what's what's the value of that? You just get a bunch of injured ass people, you know, you die in your car. So, um, yeah. So thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I hope you learned something. Or enjoy your day, at least. Thank you for watching. Peace out.